What a day. Thank you for having me here. It's such an honor to give the commencement. Um, and just a huge congratulations to Skylar, Ted, Tyler, Thomas, Thomas, Sky, Katie, Lily, Cullen, Louise, and Gabby. And in particular, a special welcome um, to Gabby's family from Lebanon and Sky's grandparents from China. <laughs> In particular, the idea of finding your moral center, or what I like to consider your North Star. Essentially, figuring out what core values motivate you the most, and how you can use those to guide your decisions and actions. To start, I'll tell you a little something about myself. The school I went to was also very, very different. Uh, it was called the Sudbury Valley School in Massachusetts. It was an old mansion with green fields around it and an ancient towering beech tree and miles of woods behind it. There were no tests and no grades and no requirements at all at Sudbury Valley. <laughs> you could literally go through your whole time there from kindergarten through high school and not take one class. It was, it was strange. <laughs> The point of the school, though, was not, uh, it wasn't about, it wasn't about a formal education, it was about making your own decisions and being responsible for yourself and your community. The students were in charge of literally everything. We voted to see what teachers would get contracts. Those of us who were elected to the, uh, as judicial clerks had to deal with really tough situations, how to manage bullying among students, how to deal with fighting, and even how to deal with the rare cases of smoking weed at school. A lot of really complicated situations we were responsible for. I played throughout my childhood. I climbed in the massive branches of the beech tree. I actually didn't learn how to read till I was nine. But I was making decisions every day for myself. I remember a pivotal moment. I was, I think, maybe 11 or 12, and I said to my best friend, Evan, I said, Ev, I can't play capture the flag all day today. I really want to learn some math. <laughs> and then I went to Hana. We called our teachers by their first name, and I said, Hana, I'm ready. Can you please teach me multiplication? That autonomy to make decisions helped me learn that uh, helped me learn about responsibility. And it led to a sense of agency, a feeling that I could do what I felt was right and important and that I could take charge. We all felt that way at Sudbury Valley. So Sudbury Valley was an important stepping stone to finding my North Star. And then after college, I had an uh, experience that was really pivotal in my life. I was living in Kenya and working with the UN across Africa with refugees. And my boss called me into his office and he handed me a list with 112 names on it. And he said, uh, Sasha, I'm sending you into the Congo on a mission to evacuate people who have survived massacres. The goal is to get these 112 people out. No matter what you do, don't try to include anybody else on your list. If you do, the Congolese government will shut you down and you'll lose everybody. A senior operations officer named Sheka was my partner on this mission. We flew into the Congo, and we got a car and a driver, and we went, we drove out to this safe haven. It was like a compound where the survivors were stuck. It had 10-foot walls and armed guards around it. And we went in to register the people there. These were people who were teachers, they were students, they were business people, they were lawyers, they were journalists, they were literally just like you and me. After we registered them and told them that we were going to fly them out in a few days' time, somebody who was working there said, before you leave, you have to go into that tent over on the side, there was a big tent, and look at the new people who just came in here. And I said, sorry, we're not taking anybody else, our list is closed, our flight is closed, we're not looking at anybody else, but Sheka was going into that tent and my feet were following her. And in that tent, there were 32 widows and orphans 
They had lost many family members in the massacres and they looked emaciated and traumatized. Sheikha leaned over to a little girl holding a doll and said, what's your doll's name? And all of a sudden the doll's eyes opened and we realized it was a tiny infant that didn't weigh more than four pounds and would not necessarily survive the rest of that day. It was, it was clear that these people might not survive. That night in the hotel, Sheikha and I started arguing. She said, Sasha, we have to take these people. And I said, I know, but we can't risk everyone else's lives. We argued all night, and finally she said to me, listen, are we or are we not humanitarians? And she finally convinced me. So I said, okay, I agree, let's try to take them, what do we do? And she said, good, now you call our boss David and you tell him that we're gonna take these people. <laughs> so we finally got permission, and on the last morning we got everybody onto buses and we had armed guards on each bus and we got them to the airport. And as we were trying to help people onto our plane, Congolese officials stopped us. And I, felt, I remember feeling scared and terrified. I thought, we're not going to get anybody out. And the seconds went by, and it felt like hours. And finally, they let us help people off the buses and onto that plane. And we all flew out of there. And all those people came to the U.S. through our government's refugee resettlement program sometime later. I always feel emotional when I tell that story. After that experience, I, it's like something changed in me. I was tuned into refugees who were the most desperate. And I started an organization called Refuge Point to make sure that people like that are never overlooked and forgotten again. And today we've helped about 64,000 refugees, just like those I met in the Congo, get to the US, Canada, Australia, European Union, and other countries and rebuild lives. And we've helped thousands of others to become self-reliant in the countries to which they fled. That tiny infant that I met there in that tent just turned 20 yesterday, and he's in college. The urgency to act for refugees, to serve with empathy, and bring justice some measure of justice in the face of unimaginable injustice has been my North Star since that time. So that was my experience, but now I want to turn to you. I have been so impressed by spending today with you and writing to you uh, over these past weeks. I mean, I, I just love it, going to Rwanda, the, the Moral Leadership Project helping refugees, um, your interests include environmental science, performing arts, marketing, advertising, nursing business, political science, and many other things. And I, I'm also impressed because you're way ahead of where I was at this time. I mean, my sense is that you can read pretty well and you can probably do more than multiplication. <laughs> Benjamin Mays was a father of the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr.'s spiritual mentor. He famously said, everyone is born into this world to do something unique. What is it that you were born to do? No matter what profession you go into, discovering your core values is a key to answering that question and a key to finding your North Star. So I asked many of you to share with me a moment in your life when you did something that felt morally right. One of you said that you noticed someone who was lonely and isolated, and you took action to help. It was a situation that was right in front of you, but it was easy to overlook. You didn't. You opened your eyes to someone else in need. One of you told me that you devoted yourself to a cause that you cared about, one that felt very personal. Your dedication and engagement inspired others and brought even more recognition and resources to the issue. One of you told me that you took a risk and spoke up publicly for an issue you cared about despite potential controversy. You showed courage and you made the hard choice because it was the right thing to do. The experiences that you shared with me and the experiences that I've had highlight three points that I think can help you find your North Star. One 
is get first-hand experience. Get exposure to issues you care about. Often these situations could be right in front of you if you just open your eyes to see them. Immersing yourself in issues that impact others can help connect you with your own unique life experiences and give you insight into your core values. For me, meeting those women and children in that tent made me think of my own great-grandparents who were refugees. That situation connected me with a deep-seated sense about taking responsibility for the situations in front of me. <clears throat> Second, figure out how you can help others. When you do this, you uncover what one leader called your distinctive competences. You find the things that you might be uniquely good at. And when these distinctive competences align with your core values, I've seen in many people a kind of blazing inspiration that lights up everything around them. Third, take risks. Get out of your comfort zone. Open your eyes to the challenges around you. Do what feels right, even if it's the more difficult thing to do. There's no lack of challenges right here in our community, across our country, and across the world that call on us to do right what's right and to take a stand. One of you told me about your senior speech, and I'm going to paraphrase your words here. You said, I challenge all of you to live a life that's true to yourself. To do this, to find your authentic self, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Take risks. Find your authentic self. Be true to yourself. What is it that you were born to do? And that's your challenge as you step out of these doors for the last time. It's not necessarily easy. Many people spend their whole lives trying to figure that out. Some are pulled into what they do by success and fame and fortune, but these can actually sometimes obscure what's most important. But you know from your time here that honing in on your core values is a path that will always lead you in the right direction no matter what you do. A path to what Stanwich calls meaningful success. The sociologist James Q. Wilson talked about this idea of the North Star. He said, it is not a strong beacon light. It is rather a small candle flame flickering and sputtering in the strong winds of power and passion, greed and ideology. But, brought close to the heart and cupped in one's hands, it dispels the darkness and warms the soul. Congratulations to you all. Thank you.